President Uhuru Kenyatta's game plan in Jubilee Party. Because personally, I had thought that the president had finally taken control of Jubilee Party and control of parliament. And therefore, the president was going to relax. But I was wrong. The drama in Jubilee Party is not going to end soon. President Uhuru Kenyatta has now shifted gear again and is now planning to expel six key allies of the Liberty President William Samoy Ruto from Jubilee Party. What that means is that these six individuals, once expelled from Jubilee Party, are going to lose their parliamentary seats, which is going to occasion a by-election in their constituencies. So today I want us to look at these six individuals and what the president really intends to achieve by expelling these six individuals. But before we do that, if you are watching this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, you automatically get notified. Now back to the main issue. And before I get into this particular matter, Gladys Wanga was elected as the chair of the finance committee. That's the first time in the history of this country that a woman was getting elected to serve as the chair of, of, of the finance committee. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Gladys Wanga. Gladys Wanga, I've known her since 2011, when she was contesting as the women rep for Homer Bay, and she was facing one of the one of the highly respected ladies from that area. Madam Onyuka, I remember, because she was the headmaster, headmistress of uh, Nyakach Girls for a long time. So she was highly respected. But Gladys Wanga came from nowhere. And during that time, we were running a lobby group called the ODM Youth 2012, which was chaired by Norman Magaya and myself as the... Norman Magaya, Magaya was the national chairman and myself was the national coordinator for that lobby group. Gladys Wanga was actually a member. And from that point, point we went and campaigned for Gladys Wanga and I realized the potential in Gladys Wanga and that's a big achievement and I think I need to highlight to you guys most of you who don't know Gladys Wanga I need to do a video on her the rise and rise of Gladys Wanga in Kenyan politics and if things goes according to the plan Gladys Wanga might make another history as being elected the first woman governor in Nyanza because Homer Bay is unique. Apart from Gladys Wanga, we also have uh, Milio Diab, who is also contesting for the gubernatorial seat. So uh, something always tells me that we are going to have a woman governor in Nyanza, but from Homer Bay. Let me also remind you that Ketwa Ruguru was also elected as the vice chair of the Agriculture Committee. That's very important because she was rewarded for dumping William Samoy Ruto. Now, let us get back to the main issue. President Uru Kenyatta, through Jubilee Party, is planning to expel six key individuals who are allies of the duty president from Jubilee Party. The idea is, the reason behind this, they are, they are talking of two reasons. Number one is that these six individuals disrespect President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. And I've actually listened to some of their speeches which qualifies to be disrespect to President Rukinyata. The president, when he is saying he doesn't want to hear Mambo at 2022, who started 2022? It is the president. He is the one who was going around when we were doing the election, saying he is going for 10 years, Ruto is going for 10 years. Who started issue of 2022? It is the president. Let, you tell, let me tell you the president. You are going to live a very bad legacy in this country. And you are going to bring war in this country. I also want to tell Kenyans that the biggest existential threat to Kenya's declining economy and democracy and freedom of speech, freedom of, of expression, freedom of political affiliation and growth is Uhuru Kenyatta. <laughs> Ini kita pernah kerja. Kena 
kila siku kila mtu anaweza kuona tu leta hii heshima na hisi heshima na hisi kumbavu so from both from both speeches you can agree that there's a kind of disrespect to the president and to the party leader and the second reason they are giving is that these six individuals have been defined party positions and of course you and i know that some of these guys no longer have any respect for the president they don't no longer have any respect for jubilee as a political party and we've seen so many instances where caleb kositani the sole member of parliament has has openly defied the party so rafael to you as the sg writes a letter to the registrar caleb kositani as the deputy secretary general then writes another letter to the registrar of political party so i think the president wants that to stop by sending this guy home but will he succeed before we go into the details about the main objectives which the president and his handlers wants to achieve by sending these individuals home let us go direct and figure out who these individuals are there are six individuals the first one is Caleb Kositanyi Caleb Kositanyi is the member of parliament for Soy constituency is turning out to be one of those dependable players in William Samuel Ruto and personally Caleb Kositanyi is now more useful to the deputy president president than even than even Oscar Sudi and even Kipchumba Murkomen because he's articulate he knows how to explain things and again he's also very guarded in the way he speaks i don't understand why he's being targeted but from where i am i don't think the president will achieve his objective by sending Caleb Kositanyi home because if he succeeds in expelling Caleb Kositanyi what is going to happen is that Caleb Kositanyi is going to be seen as a martyr for in his constituency and if a by election is going to be occasioned Caleb Kositanyi is going to make a comeback in even a comeback and is going to be very strong stronger than he was i'm going to compare him to when Raila Odinga left Fort Kenya he decided to risk to contest so once he contested and he won now he had the space and the legitimacy to talk about democracy so Caleb Kositanyi i don't think it will be wise for the president to do that so if i were to advise the president and advise the president just to pursue this but not to actualize it because it's going to embarrass him number 2 is oscar sudi can the president succeed in removing oscar sudi he can but is is he going to be embarrassed in my view the president is also going to embarrass in oscar sudi oscar sudi comes from rift valley and oscar sudi i've always told people is the mouthpiece of the deputy president william ruto oscar sudi don't just speak when oscar sudi speaks normally listen to what oscar sudi is is saying like yesterday he was in his constituency and oscar sudi said this words i wanted to listen to them very clearly and you'll read the thinking around the deputy president mimi nataka niwaeleze sisi hata kama mtatufukusa kwa hiyo chama msifikiri tutaenda tu kama viwete tutaenda kama tumerarua hiyo mashati yenu tutienda mukichua pia kuna wanaume wanaenda si hata sisi tutatembea tu sisi hapana wasiana ya kuolewa nataka niwaeleze mjue mukikaya kwamba ni lazima mtupati so that's oscar sudi and in my view the president is not going to achieve his objective by sending oscar sudi or by removing oscar sudi or kicking him out of jubilee party he won't succeed and in politics i keep on saying here that in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence the other day we saw major demonstrations in kapsaret constituency against oscar sudi the demonstrations were about some tti which had stalled so the residents were mobilized and organized a huge demonstrations against oscar sudi so you can relate that demonstrations to what's happening and this plan to expel him number 3 is party member of parliament kimani ngujiri the question is what can the president gain by kicking out kimani ngujiri i strongly believe that president ruto kenyatta can successfully send kimani ngujiri home and win that particular seat 
Nakuru County is cosmopolitan. The president would want to send a strong message for the Kikuyus in diaspora by sending Kimani Gunjiri home and, in, and uh, engineering a by-election. Kimani Gunjiri is serving his second term. I'm sure it's normally very difficult to serve, to get elected three times. So already probably, even if he was the one supporting the president with, with all his souls, probably he might not make it again. But the fact of the matter remains that the president can send Kimani Gunjiri home a by-election is uh, engineered in Bahati constituency. And because of the handshake, ODM supporters, NASA supporters can come and campaign for the Jubilee candidate. The president will succeed in sending a strong message. And because in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence, I want to take you back again to the Ngong forest land, which was a matter of discussion last week. Kimani Gujiri featured prominently in that. So you can understand. And I was reading today in the dailies that Kimani Gunjiri is claiming that he was approached by 10 million. Someone wanted to give him 10 million to support the president and also a bus for the school. I don't think the president can go to that extent. I don't think the value. I don't think Bahati Kimani Gunjiri adds more value to the president to an extent that the president can facilitate 10 million to be given to him for support and also a bus. I don't think so. Number four. Is Moses Korea. And I'm very I feel very sorry for Moses Korea. This is the member of parliament representing President Uhuru Kenyatta in parliament. So if there's any individual who would have been very close to the president today, then that individual would have been Moses Korea. And we also know that Moses Korea was actually a project of the system in Gatundu South. But, the, but Moses Korea is rebelling against the president. And I'm sure the president is keen on sending Moses Korea out. In fact, from this list, I'm sure of two individuals. One of them is Moses Korea. I want to ask you a question. Assuming today Jubilee decides to expel Moses Korea from the national, I mean from Jubilee party. And then after expelling him, then they succeed in... Uh, Forcing a by-election. And after forcing a by-election, Moses Korea contest against President Dodo's candidate. Do you think Moses Korea is going to succeed? It's not going to happen today, tomorrow, and even in the near future. It's like Raila Odinga losing Kibra. Or Raila Odinga losing in Bondo. Raila Odinga can lose any other constituency. But not Kisumu Central. Not Kibra and not Bondo. He can't do that. Even when Rafael Tuju was so popular in Rarieda, you know Rarieda was previously in Bondo, he was embarrassed there. So Moses Kuria, in my view, is the one which is being targeted in this list. Of course, they'll sit down and figure out the, the impact if Moses Kuria is, is sent home, what will be the impact? What If Caleb Kositani, what will be the impact? So I feel very sorry for Moses Kuria. And if, even if Moses Kuria is as popular as who in the Tundu South, whether he's the guy who's brought milk and honey to the people of the Tundu South, if the president engineers his removal, Moses Kuria is going to go home very early in the morning. Number five on that list is Alice Wahome. Alice Wahome is the member of parliament of Kandara. In the last election, you remember Alice Wahome, man handling a returning officer. Not for her own votes. Her own votes had already been secured and she was already declared the member of parliament. But she was doing that for president Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. Alice Wahome did that for President Uhuru Kenyatta. So despite doing that, Alice Wahome is currently one of the biggest thorns on the flesh of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Something tells me 
that Alice Wahome's political career is also coming to an end. Not because she is unpopular. Alice Wahome is also serving her second term. It's normally very difficult to make it third term. And even if she was that popular, she has given the opponents a platform. Unlike Ndindi Nyoro, you know Ndindi Nyoro is a first time member of parliament. So she, she, he can actually, Ndindi Nyoro can actually make a comeback. Because people can elect him for the second time. But I don't think the people of Kandara will be so much desperate for Alice Wahome to serve a third term. The people of Kiharu can be desperate to allow Ndindi Nyoro to continue with the good work he's doing. So Alice Wahome might go home. And number three on number six on that list is Giradi Kashagwa, the member of parliament for Madeira. By the way, Moses Kuria, you all know that he's also facing some petition. Someone petitioned his removal. Now, Rigadi is the member of parliament for Madeira. He was a former personal assistant to President Uru Kenyatta. I don't want to rule out the possibility that he won the seat courtesy of being a former personal assistant to the president. So the people of Madeira viewed him as one guy who was going to support the president and help him serve his remainder of the term. But it's now a problem on the flesh of President Uru Kenyatta. So Girardi currently is, all his accounts have been frozen. And the system is digging more dirt on him. Something tells me that the president is going to take this issue of Giradi Kashagwa personal. And because it comes from Nyeri County, Nyeri County is the bedrock of central Kenya politics. So the president would want to gauge the strength of this guy in Nyeri, in Madeira constituency. So out of this list of six, I think two individuals are likely to go home. Moses Kuria and Giradi. But again, the, the mere fact that these guys are going to be expelled from Jubilee Party does not mean that they are going to lose their parliamentary seats. They'll have to go through, a, I mean, through appeals through, to court, and that process can go up to Supreme Court. So even if the system will not succeed in kicking them out, because we know how the courts operate in this country, the mere fact that they are going to be dragged through a court process, which is going to be very expensive, draining, you know, none of them would want to be subjected to that. But of course, this is politics. But what is President Uru Kenyatta's objective of taking these guys through this process? Number one, I think the president is keen on occasioning a by-election in those two constituencies. So once he does that, then he's going to gauge his strength and if Giradi and Moses Kuria are going to be kicked out, then it would mean one thing, that the rebels from central Kenya specifically are going to toe the line. And even those who, are, who will be still supporting the duty president will know that Uru Kenyatta is still the king in central Kenya. Number two, the, main, the other objective is to scare away those who are supporting the president, I mean the duty president, especially even outside central Kenya. Because if they can go for Oscar Sudi, subject Oscar Sudi to that court process, someone from Kisi, or let's say the, the two MPs from Korea, would not want to undergo such kind of embarrassment. They'll stick around. So basically what's going to happen is that those who are supporting the duty president are going to be scared from supporting the duty president publicly. Number three, I think it's all about the support for the Building Bridges Initiative. These guys want to bulldoze Building Bridges Initiative. And it's going to be bulldozed through Parliament. So what happens then? You scare these people. Expel them. Then the, you expel them for defined party positions. And one of the party positions is the Building Bridges Initiative. For disrespecting the President. Why? Because the President wants you guys to pass the Building Bridges Initiative and you don't want. So the rest of members of Parliament from Jubilee Party are going to toe the line. So they'll be told, we we pick a kura, yes. So what I know parliament, they'll just go, go, yes, 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 yes. And that's how the president 
interest will be served. And number four, I think the president is just just wants to control, take control of the Jubilee Party and instill discipline. Because discipline was lacking in Jubilee Party. Everybody was making noise. Today in Parliament, we, the president is doing things the way he wanted. In Jubilee, things have cooled down. Things have cooled down. So I don't know what you think. But from where I am, the president is keen but not on expelling the four members of parliament. I mean the six members of parliament. Two of them are going to go. But four are going to remain. But just to achieve the specific political objectives. I don't know what you think. And if you are watching this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like, we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And I want to thank you guys for supporting this channel. The, the, there's a guy from Garissa, Abdi, we, we, you called me yesterday. And I want to thank you for taking your time and so, so many other people who are reaching out. Thank you guys. And please, my WhatsApp number, which you can always reach me on, is 0777-741323. You can always reach me on that specific WhatsApp number. If you want to support the channel through tea, most people normally nowadays like buying me tea, coffee, sorry. <laughs> most, of, most of you guys nowadays like buying me tea, so you can always reach me on that my WhatsApp number. Then I advise you on how to do it. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye-bye.